I'm speaking here today with Christian Zender from Switzerland. He performed the last two nights, very inspiring performances here in Yerevan, Armenia. On Friday night, he performed at the Armenia Art Fair, the first ever. And then last night, you were the closing concert at the RA Performing Arts Festival. After being here for a long weekend, what is your impression of Armenia? Um, when I'm honest, I'm, I, I was very surprised because um, in, Switzerland, in Switzerland they think a little bit different about Armenia. It's a poor country and uh, it's dangerous and uh, the most of the people, they leave Armenia when they want um, to keep in touch in, uh, in, in culture. And for me it was, uh, I feel very comfortable and safe here and the yes. people are very, very open. When you search to to come to new uh, things in art, also it's, uh -huh. I think it's very good for me to connect people, to connect regions like that, and to be um, impressed and to, to be um, maybe to come to new ideas. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> to be inspired. <laughs> I'm Christian Sander, I'm a singer, not a normal singer even. I, I study classic voice and uh, the jazz voice. Um, I grew up in Switzerland, I'm a very, I'm a real Swiss guy, but very connected to the uh, mountains and also to the tradition. But my way in music and to, to discover new music is to be always in contact of, uh, with my roots. In fact, you have a project called Ecotopus. First, I have to explain that we have an old, old tradition from the farmers. They live high up mm -hmm. uh, in the mountains. And before the Christianism, there was a, a kind of um, magic, uh, a magic connection to the nature with ghosts and all that uh, Spirit. really, the sp spiritual. Sp spiritual form. Mm -hmm. And from that time, um, there is a, a kind of singing style, uh, style, kind of pray, and every night the farmers high up on these Alps, um, uh, they took, before they go to sleep, uh, they took a while to scream and to sing into the landscape, into the mountains, into the echoes, and pray and be uh, grateful and say thank you to the ghosts and to the nature for uh, being safe. The most important word is Pyut, and that means protect me. Um, yes, protect us from everything uh, bad and dark. And then uh, they try a little bit to sing about the problems they have, and, uh, to give it to the nature and to, to hope uh, uh, the nature will help. Yes. It's bit, the ghost will, uh, will help. And the interesting thing is, it's not only one on Alp, there's another one there, on another Alp, and there's another one there, another one there. And everybody's singing uh, every night, and at the end they have like a circle uh, of singing. And if the circle is closed, if everyone has sung his, his uh, prey, they are saved. It's like a magic circle, you know. Actually, there are still farms that do that, and the young people, they're more and more interested to, to do that again in a... In a a little bit modern, uh, more modern way, and I, I think it's. Um, I'm very happy that this this culture comes back because it's this is really basic. You are really uh, come in touch with yourself and with the landscape. And for me, as singer, it's a kind of of the beginning of singing. You know, there is the essential thing. Why I'm singing, or there is. 
the prey, there is the communication about the valleys because the other farmers live on the other side of the valley and you need four hours <laughs> um, uh, to meet him. Uh, so you start to sing, to, to make a, a conversation. And also the, the landscape in Switzerland, in the mountains, is a kind of uh, cathedral, a kind of art architecture um, there. And you have a resonance. So you, your voice will come back in different ways in the echo. And so f for that is also my project, uh, Echotopos, that I created. Uh, is a research of of the beginning of uh, actually of singing yeah. of, of really uh, go back to the um, to the moment of the, the the birth of of all what I do actually of my yes. culture also. We are I created this project, uh, Ecotopos, um, like uh, like an art project, and at the end it will be like a sand sculpture. Um, so there is a map; people can go to the mountains and discover the echo points, and they can sing, and try out, and speak with the nature. Or even they can also find echo points, and they can um, be a part of the of the sculpture. Yes, I've gone so, online and heard yeah, some of those. They're yeah. really wonderful. Yeah. And it's interesting that um, uh, Switzerland and also the, also uh, Germany and the other countries, they're very interested in this uh, project. And uh, the funny thing is that the people, they live high up the mountains, they are not interested because <laughs> it's here. It's, it's you know, it's, it's, what we do. it's everyday, it's, it's everyday life. <laughs> But uh, all all the people they come from from town and so they they are very uh, fascinated because it's something mystic there it's something right. spiritual it's also of the uh, very philosophic also yes when you when you sing or you scream into uh, the mountains and something comes back then you realize I am yes <laughs> I, I exist <laughs> so. And so for me, it's a little bit, it's a project that's really personal. Um, it has nothing to do with, with um, uh, that I want, that this project is very big or something. It's really um, uh, a thing that um, it's a part of my life. Mm -hmm. this, this kind of why I'm going in, uh, to, to visit the mountains, why I stay for three, four weeks there. Um, nice. being connection now. Mm -hmm. So your whole life project involves going back and speaking of going back in your life mm -hmm. uh, I know that you have described a sort of breakdown as a young adult yeah. when you suffered a speech disorder which made it difficult for you to even find words and to yeah. read. How did that experience lead to your life work? Of course, it was a door opener. It was so essential, and I have to um, to do the work to come back to um, to language, to communication. And in that time, after these attacks, the brain attacks, um, I discovered the yodeling because it was I was able to to uh, to yodeling, but the yodeling. The the letters of them, Hayolo, Hodi, Yoduli. So they are a, a little bit like uh, before you speak, before language, uh -huh. you know. Language. It's not nothing, but it's not, they're not words. So I felt that, oh, with this kind, I can't express myself. Mm -hmm. There's a reason. And for that, I've, I found, oh, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yodeling can be very interesting too, because it's just before the, uh, the language and 
uh, I had problems when I sung or when I had to sung with uh, notations and so on. They had always breakdowns. And so I really stopped with classic um, mm, uh, singing point. because I, uh, for two, three years I was not able to to uh, sing any partitura or uh, something. Uh, but uh, actually, it, it was my chance for discover yes. my my universe, you know, my my very personal way to to express myself. And from this point, I didn't use any more words. And when I use words, like in the concert here, uh, in this play, it's programmatic. There is something, but it's very precise. Then what? Every word has a. It's a big sign, you know. <laughs> it's very important. So, and um, yes, at the end it was a chance. I guess every kind of sickness is uh, you can turn off in your an obstacle that sort of opened the door to the mountains, yeah. <laughs> so you could walk out. <laughs> found yodeling in Africa and other places? Yeah, yeah, it was uh, quite important because um, at that time when I grew up, when I was 20 and a uh, student, uh, the young musicians, they were not interested in, uh, in Swiss tradition music. And so the young people said, oh, blah, this music, blah, yeah, really. And they went to Cuba and to Brazil and to Africa, <laughs> like me, like me. And there I discovered that, yes, it's fantastic music, but it's not my, they're not my roots. They're not my roots. And then I, when I went back, I started to make a research in, in Swiss uh, music and created a project, a very, I say, intellectual project, a performance. Um, with a uh, with an alp, alp horn player, <laughs> with a boot horn player, and I took only the very essential things from our tradition and created new music. My my thinking of of um, Swiss music, and this was bah, it was just <laughs> yeah the starting of of the career because the people they waited for something like like yes. that, yeah. and uh, yes. It's still my life <laughs> to sing like that. You've done some wonderful collaborations with a drummer, a hurdy-gurdy player. Mm -hmm. uh, you, of course, do a lot of things with overtone singing. Yeah. Tell us about your latest collaboration. Um, yeah, yes, first I did this Oloid. Um, this Oloid uh, project was very special because I'm very interested in, um, in art. And in our country, uh, in our country, in my hometown, there was a sculpture, <laughs> and he he um, discovered this form of Oloid. He was from your hometown. Yeah. Oh, did, uh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, um, uh, Paul Schatz uh, is if we're very close uh, to Rudolf Steiner, and Paul Schatz tried to to make something visible what Rudolf Steiner was. Thinking actually, mm -hmm. at principle. That was 1926. Yeah, the sculpture. He, okay. he discovered a form like the cube, and the Oloid is really a form, a very very special form, and a little bit mystical, in one way, and connected to a nature principle, and connected to a very interesting thing in mathematics. So, and I took this sculpture, this, this symbol for. For having inspiration, for coming in a, in a flow, and I started to to create this all of it with pipes and um, percussion and electronics. It's it's quite roots, but quite very very modern. And 
then we created the project into studio. Uh, it was like a composition to compose in studio and to record. the percussionist? Gregor Hilbe is a very famous um, jazz drummer oh. and he's also is the director of conservatory in Zurich, mm. the jazz district. He's very into roots, uh, it's not only jazz jazz and so I asked him to to do this project uh, together and we took a, th a third one, this was uh, Matthias Leutner, he's a, a one of the hurdy early players in the, in the world, but he comes from classic, from compositions. Uh, he was a, a, a piano player, and he stopped when he was discovering the, the hurdy gurdy <laughs> for save his life uh, for this instrument. And he plays um, uh, all Paganini, Jimi Hendrix, uh, whatever you want, and he's very also stick into old music, baroque music, and all all the things but also into open music and it's very interesting to tradition also. So um, uh, we met and it was, uh, it was like a wedding between us. And the, also the interesting thing of this instrument is it's very old and it's connected to, uh, to, uh, to the um, modal system, you know, to the uh, vertical system of, of music. So the overtones are much uh, uh, more important than in, in the horizontal, in the temperated music. So he has a lot of possibility to connect with my overtone singing or with my um, natural singing because I I don't sing in the uh, in the temperated Equal scale. Yeah. Equal temperature. Also, but mm -hmm. uh, my interests are to sing between, uh, yes. to connect to old things. For doing new things. Yes. One step back to do two steps. Yeah. Uh, and you have a new collaboration with both of these people? With Matthias Leutner, I, I, I think in one week we have a premiere for a duo. But this is duo, it's a, it's a concert, it's, it's more improvisation. We have only points where we meet and the other things are open. And it's like, it's like a kind of conversation. It's like it's not jazz, jazz, but it's a kind of yeah. We sit at the table and we speak, and it's also it was interesting that we also with Gregor Hilbe, once we met, we met the table, a bottle of wine, and Campari, <laughs> we said like that. We just made music for one evening, like see what come <laughs> see what happens, like a conversation. And I guess this is one of the most wonderful things when you're a musician, when you, have, when you really can... Uh, like a discussion, mm -hmm. you're free. It's not pieces, to yeah. play pieces. This is also wonderful, but to, to have a conversation in music. Yeah. Is for and you have, so. you have a background in jazz guitar, and, and yeah. you mentioned John yeah. Cherry being yeah. very influential. I, I really come from, actually, from, uh, from jazz music, yeah. but at that time, I, uh, uh, it was not possible to study the jazz voice. Yeah. There were two women that smoked and they sung a little bit standard jazz standards, and for me, it was not. I, I needed some. Uh, I was really interested into voice, and so I changed to the classic conservatory, and they took me because I have good ears, <laughs> but they said you will never be. A, a classic singer, but I think it's very important for me the classic background. Uh, even I scream and shout, and um, uh, I don't sing anymore in this style. Behind is it's this um, this knowing, mm -hmm. uh, and there's a lot of good things in it. But I think they should be more open. Uh, for for connecting the the new century <laughs> we live in music. Do you have anything else that you would like to bring up, in particular, for both musicians trying to find their voice and for audiences trying to find the connection to something new? Anything you would like to say about that? 
I'm not a pop singer or a jazz singer or a classic singer. So when you listen to me first, you are a little bit, uh, what's that? <laughs> but um, I hope I can create always doors to invite the people that they think after 10, 15 minutes, oh, it's natural. It's so, wow, it's nice. Even it's, maybe it's a little bit strange. You know, mm -hmm. but I always connect a little bit to jazz, a little bit to classic. There's mm -hmm. always possibility to to find out ah, ah, oh, there is the the, the 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 connection, and then it's to sing without words, and we say in Germany evozieren. Uh, you know the word evocation. Okay, when it's mm -hmm. when you sing without words, it's not causal logic. It's not logic. Uh, you don't understand. Um, aha, I say that that it's between, mm -hmm. and but it's not nothing. I tell stories without words, and maybe you had another story a little bit, and uh, uh, and other people have has also another story, but they are connected. Mm -hmm. It's in, in the same world. For that, I'm actually I'm not a singer, and I remember. Uh, I, I gave a concert in England, in Bath, at the classic jazz jazz festival, and there came a man from a newspaper and wanted uh, also to, to make an interview, and he came to me and said, oh, this was fantastic, it was really, well, it's, uh, it's wonderful, and um, I, have, I have only one question, that, well, please ask me, and then said, um, can you also sing? <laughs> 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 you know, because I don't need words, it's not singing. Yes, he, <laughs> so it's so he, absurd. He, but <laughs> I thought yes. Trying to coax him out of the door yeah. to the mountain. Yeah. <laughs> Come on out. So funny, and it's a little bit essential. It's not singing, but it's singing. I find it an interesting paradox that you would be classed as new music. But the whole point is you're reconnecting him to what is very old. Yeah. No, it's very so, old. It's very archaic. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really yeah. connected to the roots, to archaic things. I believe that the nature is the nature. And if some frequencies come together, they are... <laughs> uh, it's, uh, when, when you listen to a major accord, <laughs> it will be always wonderful, you know. A minor, it will be always, oh, maybe it is melancholic or, or, or sadness. Mm -hmm. You can change these archaic things of frequencies. Mm -hmm. We are tuned in, in nature. Of, mm -hmm. The overtones are a principle of, of nature frequencies. And have means, great healing power. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the planets are in this, um, yeah. uh, how do you say, in this relation mm -hmm. to, to mm -hmm. the nature, the, the leaves. Uh, then the relation of the overtones of the scale and so and so we are we are all we are, we are one and we can't uh, uh, destroy this um, I it's uh, uh, um, it is like that you can't change it <laughs> have to accept it <laughs> go with it <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that the, uh, the archaic or the old stuff will be always important. We will always go at new to all the things to make, to create new, uh, new stuff. And sing it out and yeah. <laughs> if the farmer doesn't sing it back then yeah. the mountain will. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for agreeing to talk with us and thank you for your life's work and for your performances here in Armenia. Very lovely. Maybe in the United States somehow. Yes! <laughs> right. Who knows? <laughs>